QuickBooks Online 2023, Home Office Expense Tracking Method Number 4, Track Business and Personal Using a Draws Account, a Balance Sheet Account. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. And then we're going to right click the tab up top to once again duplicate again. Duplicate the duplication process. Back to the tab to the middle. Reports on the left hand side. We want to open up the balance sheet report. As it's thinking, tab into the right. Go into the reports on the left hand side. And this time, let's open up that profit and loss report, the P and L report. Let's close the hamburger up top. Let's change that range. Let's start off with 010125 to 123125 and run it. And then I'm going to tab to the left and do the same range change, close on the hamburger. And we want to go from 010125, tab 123125 and run it. Okay, let's go back to the tab to the right. We've been thinking about how to be recording our tax adjustments for the home office use or possibly breaking out the personal versus the business for those expenses related to the home office. Down below, we've created multiple accounts that are going to be sub accounts of the home office, which is useful because that allows us to group that information that might be needed to give to a tax preparer in say one area for example we've been using class tracking in prior presentations in a few different ways as we can see here if i turn on the class tracking by selecting the drop down up top and say i want to break this thing out by classes por favor run it and so now we've got our classes up top and we broke this out business personal we even had a tax adjustment thing but what if we one don't have classes or two we want to basically keep our business books uh, just on the business side and record any personal stuff as what it really should be recorded as which is in essence draws in other words if we're looking at this home office stuff for example and we're breaking out certain expenses like the utilities or property taxes or the mortgage interest or whatever uh, between business and personal, the business side should be the deductible side and the other side should be a draw, should be on the balance sheet. It shouldn't hit the income statement. We can put it on the balance sheet as a draw and we can do that without any class tracking stuff. And so that could be useful. Now there are kind of pros and cons to that method. The pro is that we're keeping our books kind of on a, a, a normal method uh, in that way and our balance sheet will be more properly adjusted in that way what we would like to do normally is try to break out as much as possible between business and personal so that we can actually have the expenses running through the checking account that are simply business related so that we can properly allocate them and easily allocate them within the business and hopefully have another QuickBooks account if possible for our personal side because QuickBooks is great at, at tracking your personal stuff uh, as well but uh, if money is taken out of the business uh, usually we're going to record that as a draw it doesn't hit the income statement at all it's going to go on the balance sheet over here under the equity side as draws so what we would like to happen is people take money out as draws and then they spend the money on personal type of stuff paying their personal bills uh, or or that kind of thing now obviously these expenses are difficult 
because we're going to be paying one bill that has a business and personal side to it. So we might just say, okay, I'm going to say the business side, I'll break out on my business books and the personal side, I will just record as a draw, which, which is good because that's the personal side of it, which would be on the balance sheet, not impact in the income statement. And then we would wind up with our business uh, income without even needing class tracking and whatnot. Now the drawback of that is that if you break out your business portion of these bills, as you record them, say 30% business based on the calculation of your square footage compared to the total square footage of the home for the office versus the home, then you're not going to have on the income statement that total amount over here, which you do when you use the class tracking method, because what you're going to have to give to the tax professional is the total amount so that they can then break it out with a little form that they use, you know, for taxes for the home office calculation to result in the ending number that we are going to get at. So that means that you, you just have to be aware of that and you can give the information to the tax professional. Just make sure you say, hey, look, this is only the, the hour half or the business half of it. And the other half I'm going to give to you by running a report for the vendor, possibly a vendor report that shows you the total payments or maybe you can track them in the equity accounts on the the balance sheet. So let's give a, I'll see what this kind of looks like, what this could look like. So if I go back on over here and we're going to say, all right, let's do this again. We're imagining things are running through our bank feeds, but this time we're going to be breaking out the business versus personal. Imagining business is 30%, but personal is the 70%. And uh, we're just gonna put the personal to the equity account and not be even dealing with this class track in business at all until possibly the end when we wanna do that adjusting entry type of thing again. So I'm gonna go up top and say, let's go to the plus button and imagine just money going out expense type of forms. You can make rules for this as well with the bank feeds, but we'll just do it with an expense form here and do the same kind of things here where we have the gas company. We're paying the gas again. And we're going to say, let's say this happened 010126 this time for 2026. And we've got the same breakout of business versus personal down below. But instead of using the class tracking, I'm just not even going to. Well, let's I won't even do the class tracking. Let's delete. We're not going to do the classes. Instead, the personal side, which is this amount, I'm going to put into a draws account, which is a balance sheet account. So if I hit the drop down. We could put it into draws. I think they give us one in QuickBooks, but draws we might. So there it is. Owner draws. However, we might want to make a specific draws account just for the home office stuff so that we can track how much we paid for these particular items in the home office. So you might want to, if you're going to use this method, you might want to break out your categories of the draws so you can kind of run reports and track it. So I'm going to hit. I duplicate again and let's take a look at our chart of accounts over here chart of the accounts accounting on the left hand side and let's look at our chart of the accounts and we have that draws account down there let's put some some sub accounts in there we could have done it basically as we go but let's just take a look at it this way so I've got my draws account it's an equity type of account down below and then within this draws category, maybe I will then make the sub accounts for the for the home office uh, information, the utilities, and and so on. So let's let's actually do that as we go over here. So I'm going to go back to the expense form and say this one was for utilities. So I'm going to say utilities draws this time. Tab making a new account. It's going to be an equity account. That's the point. It's not hitting the income statement at all. I'm not going to hit the income statement. And so we're going to say it's a draws account, but it's going to be a sub account of the draws, the draws, draws. I can't draw myself. I have no artistic capacity. I used to be able to draw a Ninja Turtle. C concentrate, concentrate Michelangelo. Anyways, so there it is. So we're going to break that out. 
All right, and so I can say save it and close it. Let's check it out. We didn't assign any classes. That's cool because I'm not doing that this time. Okay, QuickBooks. Scrolling up. Thank you for the reminder, though. We told you to remind us, and they reminded us. Now I'm getting mad at them for reminding us when I said we, we needed to be... Whatever. Let's go to 2026 and run this thing. And so now we just have the amount here for the for the business side and the personal side is over here on our balance sheet. It's balancing over here, doing a balancing act on the balance sheet, walking the tightrope. So we have it down here under the equity. Hold on, I need to change the range. I don't see it. 0101261231126. Now run it. Back on down. Let's check it out again. So there we have it. Now we've got our draws. And this is the personal part that went into the utilities. So now at the end of the year, if I run, I got to make sure I run this report just for the current year because these draws accounts don't close out to to the uh, they, they don't close out to the other equity retained earnings. So you want to make sure at the end of the year, if you use this method, you got you're going to say, hey, look, this, these are the draws. This is the personal side and this is the utilities for the business side so that you have the total amount that you're going to use to plug into the tax returns so that you can then pr apply the 30%, which should get you back to the 225 here. The other thing that you can do is, of course, go to your uh, expenses on the left-hand side when you're doing your tax prepping at the end of the year and just make sure that you go into your vendors. My vendor. And then we go into these, what was I doing, the gas company? And then we can run reports, you know, by vendor over over here. So you can run those reports. You can also get to those reports by going to the ham boogie reports on the left hand side and type in we want the vendor. And I'm gonna look at the transaction list by vendor, transaction list by vendor. And then we can change our date range up top. We're going to say that we want a custom range from 010126 to 123126. And that should give us a, a list of our items here. There's the, there's the 750. This expense form doesn't mean it's just showing the expense side of things. That's just the form that we use. So you can see the full amount is being recorded. So you can then say, hey, look, this is the amount that we actually paid you know, to these particular vendors uh, so that they can have the full information instead of just the information on the income statement, which just is showing the the business portion. So if we did this for a couple of the other ones, let's go back on over and say, let's do a new and expense form. And let's say we played the landlord, landlord. Let's say we had rent this time. The landlord needs to be paid. So same kind of breakout, we're doing the 30% business. So we did our, our breakout, same that we did before based on what we're imagining to be uh, the square footage. So we're just saying if it was 2000 times 0.3 is the business side, the rest is personal. And then we're just gonna say, all right, instead of breaking this out with the classes over here, we're just gonna say that this second one is gonna go to rent rent draws or draws rent it's going to go to an equity account and i'm going to say this is going to be an equity type of account and it's going to be uh owner's equity or draws over here i'll just say equity i'm not too concerned with that subcategory the point is i want to make it a sub account over here of equity or draws draws boom Okay, so then I can save it and close it. We could just put it directly into draws, but if I make that separate account, if I save it and close it and say, okay, I know I didn't put a class. I'm not doing that anymore. I got to turn off the reminder. It's just going to keep reminding me. But here we have, so now we have this side. This is just the, the business side. And then on the balance sheet, if we run the balance sheet, now we're tracking on the draws we have the draws meaning these are the amounts that were spent out of the business books that are actually personal uh in nature and then of course if you had like property taxes let's do that pay the tax person 
we're gonna say expense form we have to pay big gov big daddy government wants their 10 percent they don't care they don't care how you get it whatever so we're gonna say delete oh what happened there i don't want the classes gotta pay big daddy government so we're gonna say then then i'm gonna say the second half of this is gonna be property tax draws tab and once again equity type of account and this is going to be equity and we'll put a sub account of draws boom and there it is so we'll save it and close it and i know i know okay i'm going to turn off the class tracking keeps doing that stop reminding me so now we've got our breakout over here and then on the balance sheet side of things if we run it again we've got our draws and i've made these separate accounts for the draws that are related to the 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 home home now you might even make another sub account for draws for the home and make these sub accounts of that if you had other items which you probably would that would be pulling out of draws so in other words let me just show you real quick what that might look like if i made an account over here and i said well let's just make that parent account called that's how i'll do it nice and easy i'll just make this draws account let's make that edit Let's just make that uh, called home office draws, something like that, and then save it. And then if I go back on over here to the balance sheet, then we can run it. And then in your draws account down here, we got everything in the home office draws, and then you might have other draws that you can that would be just money that you took out of the business for other stuff you're doing like going on vacation or whatever whatever it is you do it's none of my business but you might have other draws that you have in there but these are the draws related to the home office which you might need for taxes so that you can give your tax preparer the full amount so you'd want to give them the full amount and you're still able to kind of break out just the business portion more properly for your income statement reporting and that gives you a better kind of reporting kind of as you as you more accurate reporting as you go because you're kind of just including the business side of things which is not just good for taxes but but good for the accounting side now if you did have other adjustments like we did before with the auto expense or something like that you could still do the class tracking thing if there was a difference here between this number, which there almost always is gonna be, and the Schedule C that you're gonna be preparing, uh, possibly for the mileage method or something like that, and you could still turn on class tracking and have that adjusting entry column to give you that adjusting, adjusting column so that you can be ready for an audit or make a worksheet within QuickBooks giving you the books number the adjustment for taxes and then the tax numbers which should tie into the bottom line of the schedule c